So, uh, as we all know, that dreams can be a sudden flash, out of blue, an in intuition. Dreams also can relate to past experience and future apprehension. Solar dreams have the backdrop of global warming and climate change, Montreal Protocol of 1992. And if you recall, the crude prices touched 140 to 150 dollars in the late 2006. Then obviously we all have concern for energy security of our country and energy independence. So what uh, are the reasons for my passion for solar? So the drivers of passion. Country's large petroleum import bill, 70% of total imports as in 2006, which as you know, by now it is 80% and predicted to be of the order of 90%. So a real worry. Large amount of central subsidy for diesel, LPG, <coughs> kerosene. And when all these things have all kind of, uh, you know, hullagulla going around. And I don't know whether you all have some idea. This subsidy amount is of the order of 175,000 crores or 2 lakh crores worth of subsidy is being given. Apart from the import bill. Global warming and climate change awareness. As I said, Montreal Protocol, the crude prices, etc., and concern. These were the things who, which really made some of us sit up and think that we have to do something. We just cannot uh, go on like this. So what was the build-up to the solar dreams in India? Gujarat, as I said, is not in isolation. First, it was India, at the government of India level and at the Indian thinking level, this was thought of. And to my mind, the year 2006 was important for solar dreams in India. Dr. Kalam, the then president, in the World Renewable Energy Conference in New Delhi, he gave an energy basket that this much should be nuclear, this should be... So in that solar, he had given a target of 50,000 megawatts. We'll later see how correct or not correct he was as we go by. In August 2006, integrated energy policy document was released by the Planning Commission, which again talked about the energy basket for the country and the planning up to 2031-32. This policy assumed a figure of rupees 25 crores per megawatt as the cost of solar power plants, a questionable number for all of us who were in solar energy by that time. And I should say that I graduated from CNG to solar because when CNG came on stream in Gujarat, I started concentrating on solar. In September 2006, the same year, there was a World Gujarati Conference in New Jersey and they had left the subject open to me. So I spoke on large potential for renewable energy in India. Remember, it is September 2006 and what we see today is great movement for renewable energy, India being ranked among the first five in the world as a proportion of renewable energy in the world, which is all happening 2006 onwards. And I'm tracing some of that history in the first three, four slides. So the first ever Solar India 2007 conference at Bangalore was organized by Vice Pune. What is not noted here, but important, is Dr. Herman Scheer, the great grandfather of solar and renewable energy in the world, I should say, Bhishma Pitama. He was present and he was the keynote speaker. And in that, I was also a speaker. Many professionals, including myself, requested the policy makers to revise some of the figures. But before that, we said this, that it is a matter of uh, real uh, worry or uh, I don't know what to say, we lamented the fact that India was at zero megawatt despite so much of sunshine and people with less sunshine was in gigawatts. Germany and some countries in USA, uh, Europe, etc. So uh, we said that uh, number one, we have to emulate uh, some of those uh, countries. Number two, we have to look at these numbers uh, again 
this 25 crores is not the correct number. Some of us who were connected, we knew from USA, roughly about $3 million a megawatt, which would translate to 15 crores a megawatt. Fortunately for us, the Planning Commission listened to us, Dr. Kirit Parikh, MNRE Secretary at that time, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, and also Vilas Rao Mutambar, who was the minister. And they carried out independent studies. Huh? And our numbers were confirmed. That is how the first MNRE policy came in the year 2008 in the month of February, which talked of 12 rupees to be given per kilowatt in addition to 3 rupees which we can afford. So that will bring it to 15 as the total. This policy restricted that number to 50 megawatts. So we told the Planning Commission, the Dr. Parikh and others, that this 50 megawatts is a pittance for a country of our size. They said, no, no, you bring the proposals, we'll see. Proposals were 7,000 megawatts came against that 50 megawatts. So we told the planners, that see what potential it has unleashed in the country. And these are all our own people, not from outside at that point in time. So if you can increase that window more, just see what happens. And to my mind, that led to Jawaharlal Nehru mission. That window is from 50 megawatts has gone up to 20,000 megawatts. Uh, fortunately, the, there was a good side effect. Uh, MNRI policy of February 2008, because by the time Jawaharlal Nehru mission came, it took about 18 to 20 months from that February 2008 before it was announced. So there was a war of incentives amongst various states. Rajasthan policy came, Punjab policy came, West Bengal policy came, and then came Gujarat policy in 2009. So Gujarat had the advantage of the other policies, Government of India as well as this, and a lot of movement in that year 2008-2009, Jawaharlal Nehru mission was also being contemplated. So there were some CERC figures, our own Dr. Pramod Dev is there now, but uh, some numbers were being thrown up uh, at the center. Finally, government of Gujarat, with all this input uh, from all of us, we were all involved, and uh, we came out with some suggestions, Gujarat came out, see Gujarat policy was very attractive. How it was attractive? That is a very important thing Shruti has been mentioning to me, that we must understand that how Gujarat was different from the rest of the people. You see, rest of the country, including in Jawaharlal Nehru Mission, they talked of an average price of, let us say, 12.5 rupees for 25 years. Even after bidding, that came through, but idea was 12.5 for 25 years as an average price. But Gujarat thought slightly differently. Gujarat regulator also said that we'll load it up front. That means we'll give 15 rupees for the first 12 years and then we'll give 5 rupees. And that was, uh, so if you really see the weighted average of this 15 and 5, 12 plus 13 years, will work out to 12.55, which is more or less the same as the center. But the attraction was that I'm getting 15 rupees in, a, uh, in the first 12 years, so I can amortize, and people really got benefited. And the government also got benefited. Please uh, let us understand, it is not just 15 rupees uh, developers getting benefited, 5 rupees, 12 years down the road, can you get conventional energy also at 5 rupees? You cannot. So government has benefited that way. Only thing is that they have given advantage first to the developers. And then they are taking the advantage. So that is the uniqueness of Gujarat policy. So the attractive Gujarat policy saw a rush of solar developers to Gujarat and PPAs of 971 megawatts were signed by December 2010. 84 developers from throughout the country and abroad came. So with these developments, I thought that we should have some sort of a, an association of solar energy association because this is a new sector. I knew people will face problems. It is not easy. You know, dreaming is fine, but implementing is different, which I had seen in my earlier jobs in SR, Reliance, etc. 
So I thought I'll be useful to all these 84 developers. And if we combine, if we work, it will be a good idea in a complementary manner with the government. So we formed the Solar Energy Association of Gujarat with the avowed ob objective of making Gujarat number one state in the country in the area of solar by working in a manner complementary to the policies of government of Gujarat, government of India, in, huh, and the central idea of bringing developers and players of solar energy in Gujarat, including financial sectors and others, under one banner. And of course, we'll carry out all these activities, uh, like arranging seminars and solving difficulties, etc. But you can see this logo was chosen in a way where in Gujarat, you know, uh, the maximum solar radiation is in the north part of Gujarat. That Kutch and Saurashtra's uh, north part, etc. So that world solar Gujarat is going there. And the green part is chosen so that there is green energy. So that was the sense behind this logo. And of course, help members for, we even thought of RECs and VERs at that time. Voluntary, voluntary certificates. The association started with around 15 members and a total of around 100 megawatts combined PPA capacity. By March 2012, the association membership stood at over 60 members with a combined PPA strength of 700 megawatts out of this 900. The association members include leading names such as Tata Power, Sun Edison, GMR Group, Moser Bayer, Azure, Lenko, Surana Telecom, Kiran Energy, you all know, Electrotherm, Roha Dicam, which is Ajay Devgan's company in a way, uh, Vari, Abelon Group, Cargo Power, Sun Power, etc. Sun Power is from USA, they also became our members. The ASUN carried out some important activities, held seminars on procurement of land and financing of solar power because that is a very important part because people were not ready to finance solar power projects. I don't know whether there are bankers here, but bankers were totally conservative and dead against solar power. Because this was new. We had to explain to them that when wind came, it was new. You were not prepared to finance. But today, wind is a matured technology and you are going to finance. The same is for solar. So what we did for that comes a little later, but that was important. Then we also carried out surveys and studies of the problems faced by the members, which I'm going to describe in detail. So Dr. Irani, uh, my mentor, he came and uh, inaugurated because in, when I was working in Tata Steel, we had a very nice uh, relationship. And then our first seminar was on land availability because land, as you know, is the major problem in all projects, more so for solar. And land prices, you see what was available in February 2010 at around rupees 50,000 to 80,000 per acre. Today, it stands at around rupees 6 to 7 lakhs because people have realized that you are going to make money in solar. At least that is the perception. So that's why we first said that unless you have good land where there is good sunshine, what we technically call as DNI, direct normal irradiation. So we first arranged, uh, you know, three months down the road in April, uh, we arranged this financing of solar power projects uh, in Gujarat. And in that we got excellent cooperation. SBI, which is a leading bank and a conservative bank, that uh, was uh, the main sponsor. Then uh, we had uh, silver sponsor at Sun Edison, a leading player in the world. 50-year-old uh, uh, solar company and which has a very good portfolio even now. We are also, of course, supported by the Gujarat Energy Development Agency. So this was the seminar, uh, Nanda Kumaran, who is now the Punjab National Bank uh, chairman. And uh, this is from IRIDA. IRIDA also we received, a, I hope you all know, Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, which finances. And we had uh, Mr. Bausar and others. So. This is, uh, these are the kind of speakers that we had. Uh, you all know Ellen Rosling, who was here in your off-grid uh, meeting, is the chairman, and we were interacting with him during that finance seminar. 
This is a real great audience, Mr. Pandyan, who is the Principal Secretary, Energy, and who has played a major role, was also there. So Pandyan speaking at this finance seminar, we felicitated him. And I, because people uh, were feeling little, uh, you know, nervous, they did not have the right kind of confidence. So we are in the seminar and at the end, I assured them that dreams come true, please continue dreaming and implementing. We are in one to one meeting. These are two megawatt person. You know, these kind of people don't have access to the bank. So I had told my members that I have brought bankers to your doorstep. Normally you have to go to the banks. So please take advantage of this. This is Irida, Director Technical, Mr. Popley, and the other two people are. Then association also supported other seminars and events uh, here at Bombay, Intersolar, and REI at Delhi, and others. And the members obviously benefited not only by way of discount, but also, uh, you know, networking and others. Uh, I am coming to that part also a little later. So, Government of Gujarat, that is where the government's role comes, did not rest content with just the policy. So, they actively followed it up by enabling and proactive measures. One of the proactive measures was to form a solar park, a big land bank, where people can come and practically the dream was plug and play. Although it is not as easy as said, which also during question answer will answer, uh, kindly remind me on that, that it is not easy to plug uh, and play. But finally we could do something and we managed to have that solar park. Of course, uh, government of Gujarat uh, acquired that land and there was a lot of government land also and infrastructure was created. So this is Asia as, as well as the country's first ever solar park was planned and executed by the government of Gujarat in record time at village Charanka district pattern bordering the run of Kutch. So there the solar radiation is very good. This park which was developed simultaneously with the implementation of the, because we had a tight deadline, consists of 2000 hectares of land with infrastructure for 500 megawatts of solar capacity at a single location where already 220 megawatts worth of plants have been commissioned. So this is uh, that area, solar park and our Kiran Energy, we are right there. Now everything was, let us say, hunky-dory so, so much because it was all uh, part of dreaming and planning. But when it came to real execution, the kind of trials and tribulations that we underwent, that is what in the next few, few slides, I will tell you. You see, despite the excellent policy and enabling provisions and encouragement from the government, the developers faced major challenges and went through precariously anxious moments in meeting the deadline, mainly in the areas of land, financial closure. As I said, banks were not prepared. Uh, it was for the first time that India was uh, getting this kind of solar projects. And we all know that the Indian interest rates are very high, so how can we compete with the rest of the world? Similarly, grid connectivity, though good in Gujarat, it was a problem that we also had, which also I'll be touching upon later, but this is, was a serious problem. Then of course, that particular year, there was flooding and heavy rains in this Charanka Park, which delayed us by another month or so, land delayed us by two, two and a half months. Financial closure, of course, uh, it took us a very long time. Then also there was another problem that today when you go and see it is an excellent from the tower, Dr. Abdul Kalam came and saw that everything is there. But when infrastructure was develop, being developed simultaneously, there was hardly any road. So even difficult for men to move, then how to move the material. Problems will of course eventually overcome, but the, I am saying this. So at this point in time, uh, we as Solar Association carried out status survey as to who is facing what problem. That was September, October, our deadline was December 2012. And people were really concerned and worried. So this is the kind of format that I had designed. 
land problem, technology selection problem, EPC related problems, then financial closure related, then evacuation arrangement, there is this conduct, uh, grid connectivity, then uh, uh, commencement of work, then government clearances, and any special problems that they are facing. Most of the people said that we have finance problem. Of course, I have summarized a little later, but this I just wanted to tell you that this is the kind of form that I devised. Uh, here I have an example of 25 megawatts, 5 megawatts, and also 1 megawatt. Finally, I carried out this analysis as to who is facing problem in land, who is facing in evacuation, that is connectivity. You can see big names facing problem in land. Alex Estra, GMR, Texas, Camrock, Inspira, Inspira etc. Moser Bayer also faced problems. Evacuation, also Moser Bayer, Inspira Solar, Surana, they all face problems. Excessive rains, all the people face the problem. Financial closure, all the people face the problems. Then lack of clarity on government clearances. Because uh, you won't believe a very strange situation that for the Pollution Control Board, anything which is not in the green list is in red list. And solar was not there in green list. So they said, that, no, it is in red list. Now, can you imagine solar energy being in red list of Pollution Control Board? But yes, it was there. And we have to <laughs> run from pillar to post to have that. So challenges of land procurement, uh, I will not go into much detail, but I will tell you the major problem was that what we call as jantri rate, the table, given table at a given location, that is the rate at which uh, the land uh, uh, stamp duty will be, uh, you know, government's official rate, was not decided for two and a half months. So unless I have the land registered in my name, I can't commence the work, nobody will finance. And it was a big uh, problem for all of us. Then, as I said, uh, financial closure was a problem. Developers had to live with the problem of delayed financial closure, high interest rates, etc. Grid connectivity, as I said, also posed problem, in many, including at Solar Park. Solar Park, though a big uh, substation was being uh, created, beyond the deadline it took them two months to complete that. Then heavy rains I have talked, infrastructure also I have talked. You can see the main road leading to the Solar Park. How can we take machinery on this kind of road? Then water logging. This is in Kiran Energy's plant on 6th September. This is the figure that when our deadline was December. Faced with these difficulties, the developers were constrained to approach the state regulator for extension of three to four months. I myself went to Dr. Mishra, who is the chairman, and he, had, he knows me. I went with that analysis which I just showed to you and he said, yes, you have a case, please uh, come to us. And that is how we went to the regulator, which of course government did not like. Let me tell you because that Kashmakash also we have undergone. But at the same time we thought that we have no other recourse, but regulator is the best source, let him judge. Overall, around 70 developers approached the GERC, including the Tata Power and others. Uh, as Solar Association, I also filed on behalf of everybody and deposed before the uh, re regulator. And of course, I had taken care in our petition not to criticize the government, because this is despite the government. The problems faced are despite the government. But the petition was eventually rejected. And the government and regulator said, nothing doing, you have to finish the project in time. And we had really uh, uh, apprehension that 15 rupees, which was the main attraction, will be reduced to 11 rupees if I meet just that deadline. So we had to really, we were in a big precarious situation. <coughs> However, there was a side gain to the petition. The advocate, Mr. Ramchandran, on the other side, that is on the uh, utility, GUNL, he said that GERC order is up to 28th January and your PPA is up to 31st December. So GERC prevails. So that is how we got 28 more days, which otherwise we would not have got if, uh, unless we have gone for the petition. So, uh, and uh, many of us needed just those 28 days that helped us in achieving the target. 
Then at that time what we did? The Solar Association exhorted its members to accept the verdict. Not to go in for appeal at the appellate level or high court or other levels and now concentrate, make all out effort, pull all stops and implement the project. Bring more people, bring this. That is the kind of uh, exhortation we did and then there was triumph. With all this background, so successful commissioning, despite the difficulties and challenges faced, ultimately success was achieved and a total capacity of 605 megawatt was commissioned by March 2012. The latest figure for Gujarat is little more than 824 because yesterday, uh, as of this 31st March, some 20 megawatts more have been added and we expect some more to come in the few days more. But let us take this as about 840-850 megawatts, which is out of the country's total of 1200 to 1250 megawatts. So it is a major thing. So what has come in the solar park? You just see. This is a small 1 megawatt plant. Then this is a huge 25 megawatt plant. And you can see a sea, a lake of the solar panels. So this success, ultimately at the end of the day, what it can be attributed to? It can, in our opinion, be attributed to the excellent enabling provisions of the Gujarat Solar Policy 2009 and proactive role of the state government wholehearted support received from the government of Gujarat agencies like, you know, JEDA, GUNL, GPCL, JETCO. I will tell you one example, I mean, one highlight, that some of these uh, girls in JEDA at Gandhinagar, which is, uh, as you all know, about 30, 35 kilometers from Ahmedabad, used to be there in the office till 8, 8.30 p.m. in a government office to clear our customs duty and excise duty exemption related files. And I have myself uh, seen it that, so all of them also contributed in a big way. And of course, apart from these two, it is the solar developers, all of us, bringing large investment to the tune of 2 billion US dollars, state of art technology, undertaking the risk, because as I told you, the kind of problems which there was a risk, it is not just that. If you would have missed by one day the deadline, you would have gone from 15 to 11 and you can imagine what effect it can have over 25 years and making all out effort pulling no stops in meeting the deadline. Success can also be attributed to the important supportive role played by the Solar Association facilitating and reinforcing the effort and confidence of the members hmm, in meeting the challenges. Of course we are in seminars etc. I have touched and of course strategic advice also we lend to people. So this is uh, some kind of vision that we had way back in 2010 and by 2012 it all helped up. And this is the important part I was touching upon. Uh, you know, all this service was rendered by the SMA at a cost of rupees 10,000. Can you imagine, this is not even a sem seminar's fee one day. This we have over one year and even second year we have not collected anything. And still we are giving that service. So that low cost part is also important. Uh, other notable uh, solar activities in Gujarat, path breaking one megawatt solar plant on Namada Canal was commissioned. I am coming to that little later. Then Gandhinagar five megawatt solar rooftop work uh, has also been awarded and we expect it to be commissioned in the next six months. Then of course the Gujarat Pollution Control building having 80 kilowatts on its rooftop. Then Gujarat based parabolic dish manufacturers are leading suppliers of thermal heating systems in India. Uh, you know, at, uh, whether you go to Tirupati or Shirdi, every day 5000 people eat. So there this system, solar system has been provided so that you don't use so much of LPG. The steam generated from solar greatly helps in that mass cooking. So this is the, over the canal that is being talked about. This was the first one megawatt plant put up. The advantage 
number one is that you don't require land land is under stress in the country wherever you go so if you can avoid uh, land it is a major thing that is advantage number one advantage number two that generally a canal is near a consuming point so that that line losses etc are not there the farmer who needs gets the power and third most important thing which is going to be the next war or next challenge in the country already a challenge is water it saves 100000 liters of water per day for per megawatt so these three advantages so when jawaharlal nehru mission phase 2 draft was being discussed at delhi we have all said that this should be emulated because canals are throughout the country punjab bihar wherever you go canals are there so if you can do this it will be a great thing to do so this is that canal view then this uh, you know parabolic dish we are aware and that is where i think one of your members gadia solar deepak bhai i was on the board of his company and uh, we have this improvised uh, parabolic dish of 32 square meter usually it used to be of the order of 8 square meters so this concentrates the solar energy at a focal point and focal line in a big way so this thermic fluid heating application for indian army you know at these heights at le etc it is very difficult to supply fuel diesel etc so if we can make use of solar energy which is plenty all the army people were thrilled when we went and showed to them that you can make tea you can make samosa you can fry samosa uh, you know using solar energy so they were absolutely thrilled and uh, of course this is for a hot water system at uh, paper mill in ludhiana so what are the future solar dreams i have told you so far about what has already happened five more solar cities and solar rooftop are planned at surat rajkot bhavnagar jamnagar etc uh, more canal based even in the gujarat budget this time some money has been allotted um do we are not very happy we want more uh, at the country level and also at the state then affordable small power units for every household and farm i'll touch upon that subject also later future solar dream for india we are all now convinced that we should not talk of 20000 megawatts we should talk of 50000 megawatts which is what dr kalam as i said i will link up we should talk of 50000 and for this you know what we all say that what happened in silicon valley 15 years ago is likely to happen for solar in india in the next 15 years the the reason is very simple that all other fossil fuels you are importing one way or the other even coal we are importing natural gas we are importing lng and huge subsidy bill for all this so one day people will listen to us we are very sure that solar which is available next door biomass available next door if you have to transport the fuel and spend energy in transporting fuel what is the sense so we have to plan things where next door the fuel is available and i should use it then of course much improved solar energy storage is needed because one of the drawbacks of solar is only when solar is there you can use it so if you want to use it when sol sun is not there then you need good battery and other storage uh, devices which of course is a matter of big uh, research and work throughout the world and india is fast catching on then the solar desalination plants i would like to touch upon because this is a very important thing that we should all think about that as i said that the next thing after energy is going to be water for the country so there was a huge uh, every year they arrange csp concentrated solar power csp today seminar in delhi that is india europe likewise in usa etc so this time just about 15 days ago for the first time i was invited to speak so everybody is trying to sell his technology from abroad and all the seven csp plants in the country are delayed today 
for whatever reasons. The way we underwent tribulations, they are also undergoing tribulations. So they are all delayed for whatever reason. At that time, I only touched upon two subjects. That any technology that comes to the res rescue of the problems of the country, that is the technology we need. And not just because you have technology and you want to dump it on to us. Hmm? That is just not the right thing to do. For solar desalination, our concept is that supposing you go for, let us say, 50,000 litres per day at a sea port location, it will cost you rupees 4.5 crores, out of which one third government of India will give you. You can claim 80% accelerated depreciation and make sweet water, potable water. And our country's two third of our country's coastline. So if we can have 100,000 such plants, you don't need big dams. This is not to say that don't go for dams, but at least you require less dams, a combination. That is the kind of planning that we should talk in terms of desalination. Similarly, solar green buildings are being talked about, we all know. Solar and wind hybrid is being talked about. Then hydrogen also through solar energy. So constraints uh, have already been discussed, so I'm not going into this slide, land and finance, etc. Then what is going to be the future driver in the country for solar energy? That it is this renewable purchase obligation that what are known as the obligated entities, those who are in the conventional fuel, they owe it to the country that when they are so much of emitting CO2, they should in turn put up solar energy, then the country-wise a policy decision is there. Every regulator is setting these standards. Gujarat has also set up, Maharashtra has also set up, Tamil Nadu has also set up, that out of your total energy, this much should be the proportion. In Gujarat, it started from 0.25 and it will go up to 3%. Tamil Nadu has gone up to 6% in case of commercial. Likewise in Meda, Mumbai also. Hmm. So this RPO, there is another concern because now even in Gujarat, if you come, we say that we don't want to now support any more solar through the state budget. But it should be supported by REC. That those who are supposed to have this obligation, what are known as obligated entities, renewable purchase, for them you should put up the plant. Either they consume solar energy or they buy these RECs. RECs are traded. That just last May, uh, REC trading for solar has started. It is picking up, undergoing its own initial problems. But we are very hopeful and we have given suggestions that how to improve REC. Uh, you all remember Dr. Pramod Dev, I suppose. Uh, Pramod Dev is now the CERC chairman and we all keep on interacting that please change this policy, tinker with this, tinker with that. And I'm sure that we'll eventually solve that problem in the next one year. Because REC is today not bankable. Again, everywhere finance, you know. So finance man is always important. And he has a genuine point. So we said that you increase the duration from 5 to 10 years. Tinkering with the numbers, uh, when I said last time here in Bombay, during the EU seminar, Dr. Pramod Dev has noted, uh, you were there, I think, Shruti. Uh, then uh, higher emphasis in off-grid. And a good admix of small and big projects. This off-grid thing reminds me of the suggestions uh, that I have given to the Gujarat government. For what should be the Gujarat policy over the next uh, few years, I have said by 2020, we can always give for 31, 32, 2050, etc., a much higher figure. But by 2020, we can go to 5,000 megawatts. Today we are at, let's say, 800 megawatts. How this 5,000 megawatts can be achieved? Number one is that you go for rooftop 1000 megawatts which would mean one kilowatt system in 10 lakh houses or two kilowatt system in five lakh houses how to promote that also i have suggested later but first i am giving the vision and the concept similarly off grid 250 kilowatts into and 1000 megawatts can be through that balance 3000 megawatts can be from these large uh, solar parks and plants and solar thermal and things like that. Of course, desalination should be encouraged. That also is one of the things that we have said. 
canal based uh, should be encouraged that also we have said so i will just touch upon two parts which affects all of us that rooftop solar and off grid who has a small or medium scale industry we have said in gujarat that government of india gives 30% subsidy for 1 kilowatt or 3 kilowatt system you give additional subsidy of 20% karnataka is giving 20% madhya pradesh is giving i said in gujarat we should give 30% and i am answering the question of where to get this finance from also so that the finance people we should be able to first take care of likewise for off grid and this dream can come true so the chief secretary of gujarat when he asked me one simple question i thought that i'll gone one minute to congratulate him on assuming charge uh, he says uh, when i talked about uh, that i have given this kind of suggestion he says mr mehta 5000 megawatts you think it is good i said yes tell me by 2020 what will be the price of solar i said less than or equal to your conventional fuel he says you are sure i said yes then he says then why are we wasting so many crores for gas pipelines and thing i said that is your policy privilege but i am saying that you give me 10% of what you are doing and i'll make solar affordable the same thing for the country also that out of this 200000 there is 2 lakh crores of subsidy that is given if you give just 5 to 10% we can make solar affordable and solar diesel parity is already achieved bombay commercial parity is already achieved it is so there is no doubt that solar will eventually achieve the grid parity with coal in the next couple of years so we have to plan something like that acha this i am avoiding this because this is a very uh, high concept in which kalam is also involved us the idea is to launch satellites in space and generate i am connected with one such us company so i am skipping that hmm? so as i say i am an eternal optimist and follow the slogan dreams come true you have to work for your dreams then uh, cng also because shruti had said uh, should i touch we have, do we have the time yes, yes. Huh? okay uh, cng i have not prepared slides but uh, i would surely like to say something to you uh, you see the year 2000 when uh, the reliance refinery was commissioned and i became an independent consultant at that time amongst the major things that uh, we observed was that air pollution levels in some of these uh, gujarat cities like amdavad baroda wapi ankleshwar were very bad we were considered amongst the dirty dozens as far as amdavad is concerned by the supreme court and central pollution control board etc so in delhi supreme court case was going on for cng yet the final result had not come so i told government to gujarat at that time that whatever is happening in delhi one day it will come i told them in gujarati vatte gatte aushe ha so before that let us get ready they said uh, okay uh, you prepare the report and uh, we'll see that is how i gave a report on how to implement cng projects in gujarat finally all the recommendations uh, went to the secretary and the cm cm called me i did not know him at all i just went with two sheets of paper that this is what you should do he was immediately impressed and he called uh, dr mishra who is now the regulator as principal secretary that uh, please make mr mehta advisor we don't know uh, it is not necessary that we know everything that is how i was appointed advisor to gspc which is state petroleum corporation for implementing cng projects at that time i will just mention to you three highlights of cng in gujarat number 1 is that you know we had to target those three wheelers first because they are the most inefficient ones so while i talked to some of our people in bombay by that time cng was already there so after landing at the bombay airport my sister stays at car so i normally would go in an auto so i will strike a conversation with the auto driver that uh, how do you feel this cng kaisa lagta hai Yes, sir, बहुत अच्छा लगता है आई एम सेविंग हंड्रेड फिफ्टी रुपीज मोर पर डे एंड इन इज ओन लैंग्वेज धुआं कम निकलता है तो बहुत अच्छा है कैन यू कम टू गुजरात सर जरूर आएंगे 
not only you bring four friends that means five of you to gujarat i'll take care of you transport saying this that but please share your experience with our drivers so they all got ready likewise i contacted sunita narayan uh, who had known me because of the cng work uh, and also the report that i want delhi drivers to come here so delhi auto sang chairman and drivers came our drivers we arranged one interaction that rather than our giving a lecture it is better that drivers talk amongst themselves whether cng is good or not and it had a telling effect and i told our people that dialogue is also important because when i went to them their association they said sir we are the last rung of the society nobody is prepared to look at us nobody will give us money sir why have you come to us we can't give you anything i said please i have not come to take anything from you i have come to give something to you sir sir then tell me i said please uh, you come to this seminar and i give them one i don't know that gujarati kahawat many people uh, know that nana vagar no nathiyo ne nana nane nathalal that that if you don't have money and your name is uh, nathalal people will call you nathiyo but if you have money or people say that he is going to earn money in the next one or two years they will call you oh nathalal how are you this that hmm? so i said that is going to happen to you for cng in gujarat please come then they came and you won't believe this created so much of acceptance because you know that resistance to change had gone and really they were you know bated breath they were waiting for cng on the contrary the cng uh, you know licenses were getting delayed before i come to cng licenses we also had to learn lesson from bombay and delhi by that time so what we found that in delhi especially after the fitting of the cng kit if you have some problem 6 months down the road that man is not available the shop is closed so fly by night operators said got into it made money and went away i said that should not happen in gujarat so we held a special seminar and we called all the cng kit people including from bombay leading people hmm. and uh, we said that let us devise norms that you should have ri certificate you should have this kind of workshop the, you should have this kind of staff trained this kind of slope to bring the vehicle this that so all that was finalized and they also liked it because those who are good manufacturers they do not want all these fly by night operators to come so i am not uh, giving names if you are interested later i'll give but there again i came to bombay and took the help of these people and we had an excellent uh, seminar we fixed those norms they all accepted and our rto will go and inspect that this facility is there then only he will be given the permission to retrofit that was the second important highlight third important highlight with regard to licensing without naming the licensee he was delaying the project and times of india one of the girls took my interview and i was forthright i said this project there is an alarming delay so and so company is delay delaying this project and at this rate people will lose faith in private sector the moment this was august 31 the day this appeared in times of india the chairman of that big group telephoned our chairman gspc that your senior person making irresponsible statements and this and that and in short remove mr mehta and that day when the news came i was here in bombay my people telephoned that sir such a letter is come i said don't worry i have faith in our chairman next day when i went sullen faces is that i said don't worry i have faith when i went to our chairman a very astute person senior is so when i entered mr koshi ck koshi huh? when i entered his room he laughed kya pranav you are in news while taking my seat i told him that sir somebody has to call a spade a spade koi ke to sacho bolo pade and i am not an employee of gspc i am an independent consultant independent expert i have given my views and i stick to it 
Uh, that we know you for so many years, so you are not going to change your views. But tell me that why you said this. So I gave him all the reasons, land, this, that. I am not go going into that. That if someone is interested, I will say that. But he was very happy at the end of the day and he said, yes, what you are doing. This brought a lot of pressure on the licensing. And that licensee fellow will come for various meetings, I will go with my people. And one of the persons, their leader, he will kind of taunt me. Huh? Taunt me or try to taunt. He will tell my people that Pranav Bhai Garba Karavesha Apanne. Because we run a Garba group, my wife and myself. Huh? So Pranav Bhai Garba Karavesha. Huh? So I told him, Jo Gujarati ko Garba nahi aata hai, usko sikhana padata hai. So tell your chairman that what I have to say, I will stand, I will say that sit, standing on the top of Badra Fort, you know, we have that Badra Killa. Hmm? So, but the side effect of all this was, it brought up a lot of pressure and finally, and by that time we had given promise to the Supreme Court Committee that we will establish 30 stations, not even one station was there. So this pressure worked and 31st December, the first station was commissioned and that chairman, in presence of the chief minister who came to inaugurate, he asked me that, you are happy now Pranobai? I said, yes, I am happy for our city and not for my pocket. <laughs> and eventually, that is how CNG, we converted uh, around 90,000 auto rickshaws over a period of two years. So that was, and air pollution levels came down. I, I don't have to say that. Anybody who is visiting Ahmedabad easily testifies to that. So that is the CNG story. Now, I will uh, briefly, we have time, no? I hope I am not uh, crossing the time. Uh, then we can have this in the question and answer uh, also. I have no problem. I will briefly <coughs> touch upon how, can, how we can adapt solar energy in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, you know, these solar cookers available in khadi stores, etc., of the order of 25. Uh, we all have some solar space in our house at some place which we can find and easily do this, I have seen many working women saying that I have this cooker over 20 years and by the time I go, I place it and by the time I come back, I just have to do a little work and it is always there. Similarly, I am advocating this solar hot water system pressurized in apartments, where if you put up a large parabolic dish, which I will describe in detail, or a vacuum tube kind of hot water, which can supply to all the apartments through a proper pipeline. We can also add a one kilowatt solar system in apartments. Those who have south facing walls at least, or balconies can do it. Common lights and parking area we can easily use. Of course, solar appliances we can use. So I'll first describe the solar hot water system for apartments. We have this improvised solar parabolic dish of 16 square meter. Deepak Gadia, <coughs> all of you know, uh, since I was in that company, of course that company is now in a different form and shape. So we are doing that. So let us say 2000 liters per day, it will give you 16 square meters hot water, where what we call as delta uh, T is 20 degrees and that is uh, about 35, you heat it to 55, which is good enough for our bathing and other purposes. So space requirement is about 310 to 350 square feet, which you always have it available on the terrace. <coughs> At an average of 100 liters of water per household, it can serve 20 apartments. 100 liters, you know, our one bucket is generally 20 liters. So 5 of 55 uh, degrees centigrade. We generally add uh, cold water, so that 5 buckets could be worth 10 and it is easy for four or five persons to take bath. The cost of this will be rupees 150,000 plus some plumbing ex expenses. This would mean rupees 25,000 per apartment, which at the time of booking or even now people can do is. Metering, of course, we can introduce that who is consuming how much. It is very easy to do that. Then payback when compared to electric geyser, should be 15 to 18 months and less. When I'm talking about this, I would like to say something in my own house. When I went from an apartment to the bungalow, 
Now, much to the dislike of my family members, I said, no geyser in my house. So they all said, what, what to do, this, that. I went for the solar hot water tank and it worked wonders. It is much more than paid back, there is no question. Only thing is when there are too many people who want to. So that is one constraint which ultimately I had to make compromise and agree with the family members is when there are many people in the house and they want water at the same time. So one electric geyser, I said, okay, out of the uh, four or five bathrooms that we have, <laughs> uh, that was agreed upon. So likewise, what I'm trying to say is that we should all go for this. Why should we use electric geysers, which are electricity guzzlers? So one kilowatt solar system, this is another thing that I said that we can easily do. South facing wall or balcony is required. Approximately 65 square feet space is required, which will be let us say 10 feet into 6.5 or 9 feet into 7.5 or something like that. Which generally we also have a wall, even in an apartment, we have a side wall where if you have this panel, it can generate electricity. And onto your balcony also it is possible by way of fixing a bracket, putting it up. So this system will cost somewhere around rupees 1 lakh. MNRE will give a subsidy of 30%. So 0 0.30 lakh gone. So net cost will be 0 0.70 lakh. If you can absorb depreciation, many people are running professional or such units from the house. Or a company like me, I am putting up for your house. I can claim this net depreciation and 0 0.40 lakhs will go. So units, how many units it will generate? That will be of interest to all of us. In a Mumbai-like situation, where in Gujarat we cal calculated 330 days of solar in a year, but Mumbai we calculated 300 days. So 300 days at the rate of 4.25 units per kilowatt uh, per day, it will generate about 1275 12, per year. What is the saving? 1275 into rupees 7 or 6.5 or whatever we are paying. And you know commercial are pay, paying 9 rupees, 9.20. And if you just examine your electricity bill, maybe you are paying 7 rupees. I, I was about to tell Shruti that please bring your electricity bill. I will tell you how much you are consuming. So payback with depreciation will be of the order of four and a half years. I would also suggest that some of the large companies with whom you may have connection, tell them that as CSR activity, they should give one kilowatt system to the people, including uh, our own, uh, you know, LIG. If we can do this, it will be a wonderful thing to do. And we undertake to give all guarantees, doing all the work, and make sure that uh, these many units are generated. That part we can assure. And we have companies also who can do this. Common lighting, I have already said, can easily be used, uh, solar lighting. Commercial buildings and restaurants at Baroda in a hotel we have done. And I think we are now running out of time, so I am not, we can again say, but these are two my mandatory slides. In all my lectures, ever since 2006, I am showing this. I am saying this to the planners accord the same priority as space and nuclear to solar. We never ask for economic viability in space. We never ask for economic viability in nuclear. And these are all tax dollars, mind you, our money. Whereas here there are private sector people coming in solar. And you are asking me economic viability, this, that. So please accord the same priority. And you won't believe the next slide also. I think I'll say that sentence after the next slide increase the solar energy budget to five times the present budget across the board without visiting until grid parity is achieved. Both these questions when Abdul Kalam to see our solar park. He's a great uh, proponent of space and nuclear. I asked him this question. Of course, I have known him through that space thing also. So I said, sir, uh, it may be a little arguable still. I would propose these two things. He says, Mr. Mehta, I agree with both these sentences. So a great mind like Dr. Kalam also agrees with both this. So with 
my famous slogan dreams come true i come to an end thank you